Okay. Hello, everyone. Just got a couple people here, and we, I know several have uh, said that they're they've got some conflicts, and so um, just wanted to kick things off here. Welcome to this webinar, uh, "How to Hunt Upland Birds," uh, brought to you by Modern Carnivore. It's also this is a preparation for people who are going to be part of the upcoming Minority Outdoor Alliance grouse camp at the end of the month here in northern minnesota and so uh what we're going to do tonight is just take take a few minutes to walk through expectations for this grouse camp and we're going to talk about how we're using some different tools that are available to everyone uh we have a grouse camp here in minnesota northern minnesota at the end of the month and we've got a limited number number of slots uh, and we've had more than the allotted slots. Uh, people apply for more than the allotted slots. And so uh, we will be um, doing that finalization here in the next couple of days. But even if you're not part of that grouse camp, I encourage you to engage in this process because a lot of the fundamentals of what we're going to talk about here tonight will apply to you whatever uh, whatever your pathway is to the upland bird hunting lifestyle. So uh, throughout the, the conversation, please uh, just put a, a, a question in the chat window if you've got a question, uh, or you can go off mute and, and ask a question. And I will, uh, I will uh, take those and e either I can answer them or I will look for the answer after the webinar and, uh, and get it for you and follow up with you. So with that, I'm going to switch over to um, the slides here. One moment. Let's see here. And so um, there we go. I think we got it now. Now we've got it. So um, again, uh, Minority Outdoor Alliance Grouse Camp 2023 is the focus, but we're going to talk about different tools that are available to everyone, regardless of whether you're going to the camp or not. So tonight's agenda, uh, we should be out of here in less than an hour. Uh, I just want to walk through expectations for the program, both the online course that everyone can start this evening, as well as um, the larger program with the, the Grouse Camp at the end of the month. Pre-hunt pe preparation, again, that would apply to you whether you're going to the grouse camp or not. Uh, what the agenda is for grouse camp, and then, again, any questions you might have. So the goal for this type of program is to really create a foundational understanding for you around upland bird hunting so that you as a new hunter really understand what it's about. And even if you're not ready to get out in the woods yourself yet, for whatever reason, you've got that good foundation in which to, to progress at your own, at your own rate. Um, from a programming standpoint, we're going to use digital learning through the How to Hunt Upland Birds course. Uh, if you joined here before we, we launched this evening, I was showing a little bit of one of the stories that is part of the How to Hunt Upland Birds course. Um, and we're also going to use community discussion. And that's through, again, different avenues. There could be both discussion uh, on the Modern Carnivore Facebook page, uh, as well as during these webinars. And you can always email me if you have any questions, mark at modcarn.com. Uh, Want to reinforce any of the online learning with in-person mentored hunts when possible. And so either being part of this hunt at the end of the month um, or uh, the all women's hunt, there are a lot of different, a lot of different opportunities that are coming up, uh, especially here in the, in the Midwest. Um, and ultimately we want to promote a safe and ethical experience throughout the entire hunt. And that starts really with your preparation all the way through to the post hunt cleaning of your birds and your equipment and everything else that goes along with that. So here are the elements of what we have in this program. So from a learning standpoint, again, how to hunt uplandbirds.org is the learning platform to really get all of your foundations started off when it comes to upland bird hunting. And this is comprised of five different 
stories of five different hunters from across the country hunting different birds coming from different backgrounds, as well as then a dozen lessons underneath there covering every topic from equipment to the basics of the different bird species to how to have a safe and ethical hunt to what the culture is around hunting. So you're going to get all of those basics. But, but another piece of it I want to make sure that you're aware of is firearm safety. Uh, well, this course, How to Hunt Upland Birds, is about culture and community and understanding what, it, what everything is about with upland bird hunting. Um, it is not a firearm safety certification course. That is something that you need to take in the state that you uh, are that you live, and it generally applies to every other state in the country. So for Minnesota here, here's the link, and I will put these actually into the uh, you know. Let me just uh, step out of this. I'm going to put these into the chat function for you. And I do apologize if you hear my puppy. I have a new Griffon hunting dog that is uh, up in her kennel and it sounds like she's uh, she hears me uh, <laughs> talking and is not happy about that. Um, so I just added those links for how to hunt upland birds and the firearm safety course into the chat area. So please look there. Um, let's see. Let's go back to a full screen here. No, that's not where I wanted to go. Um, we then have the webinars, which we're doing tonight, next Wednesday, and then Wednesday after that. Again, you can go to the private Facebook page. I should have mentioned, I'll put this into the chat also. Here's the link for the private Facebook group. And that is where you can ask questions about hunting in the privacy of the modern carnivore group. This is not open to the general public. So feel free to ask questions maybe that you wouldn't put want to put out there just on the web as far as asking a question that might be sensitive to people who don't hunt. And then again, we want to get you out for a practical uh, hands-on hunting experience. And that's what the September 29th through October 1st uh, grouse camp is going to be about. And I should say, um, I had the, the logos on that last screen, but again, this event is a, uh, at the end of the month, it's Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever, who is the lead organization behind it, but also in partnership is Minority Outdoor Alliance and Modern Carnivore. So we want to make sure at the outset that safety is of the utmost importance in everything we do. And again, that's why I did say in the last, in the, the link I put in there for the firearm safety course, you need to really ideally have your hunter firearm safety. Now, if you don't, you can get what's called a hunt, uh, apprentice hunter validation in most states, including Minnesota. And the apprentice validation allows you to hunt side by side with an experienced hunter without having your firearms hunter safety certification. But I'd encourage you to really get that if you can before you go out hunting. But know that there is that avenue to uh, to go down if you don't have time to get that done beforehand. For the event at the end of the month, we'll also be following Minnesota Department of Health guidelines regarding COVID-19. As we've all heard in the news recently, there's different spikes. And so we are bringing a group of people together. However, there's the ability to, to be fairly distanced. And obviously, when we're in the outdoors, um, that's just naturally part of the experience. Um, Want to make sure you're careful when you're traveling roads and in the woods, as well as handling the birds. And I would say for our camp, as well as any other camp that you might be going to, if there's anything you're uncomfortable with, please say something if you feel uncomfortable. It could be related to firearms. It could be related to the idea of maybe taking a bird for the first time or getting lost in the woods. It could be anything. Just say something and your mentor should be able to help you address that. And it might mean that, you know what, you just change change your direction, your path of what you're going to do that day. Um, or it could be just having a conversation to really discuss it and determine, you know, where that, that concern is coming from and if there's a way to get around it or, or address it really. 
and that is because the number one experience, the number one goal for us is to make sure you enjoy all aspects of the hunt. We want you to have fun out there. And I'll give you the simplest example that oftentimes comes up. And it came up last year when we did a grouse camp. And that is that some people just say, you know what? I don't even want to carry a gun. I just want to go out and experience what the hunt is like. Maybe I'll carry a camera. Maybe I'll just walk along behind you and just observe. And that is totally okay. Even if you were planning to carry a gun and you decide, you know what? I'm just not comfortable yet. That's totally okay. Or let's say you're carrying a gun, a bird comes up and you say, you know what? I'm not comfortable taking the shot. Again, totally okay. Whatever you feel comfortable with is the focus and the priority for any type of hunt. Um, so for the firearm safety certificate, that is required for anyone born after 1979, after December 31st, 1979. So if you were born prior to that, um, you do have you do have the ability to avoid doing the firearm safety certificate. But everyone else has to have it outside of the uh, the uh, apprentice option. Um, if you are doing the hunt here at the end of the month, um, please buy your license in person at this point because we're getting pretty close and you probably get it in the mail in time, but I'd hate to have somebody come to camp and not have their license sent out yet. And now they're in a tough spot where they don't have the license, they can't get a hold of it. And so go to the DNR um, webpage to purchase a license. And there's a listing of every location where you can buy a license and you can search by county and area, and you'll be able to find a place where you can get your license. Uh, basically any sporting goods store is a good option. We wanna make sure that everybody has completed all the lessons in How to Hunt Upland Birds, the online course. And so please go through that. We're gonna watch two of them tonight together, which is the bird basics for um, woodcock and for rough grouse. The, the primary focus of our hunt is going to be rough grouse, but woodcock, American woodcock are in the very same vicinity, very similar vicinity as rough grouse. So when you're going after one, you're generally gonna have opportunities at the others. We want everybody to either be on the webinar live, this one tonight, and we have two more, or watch the recordings of it, as well as you need to be present if you're at the hunting camp at the Friday evening safety presentation. Again, here is the link for the um, Apprentice Hunter Validation. I'll put this link also in the chat. And one second here, I'm going to add this. There we go. And um, again, the 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 validation, you would tell the person buy, when you buy your license at your local sporting goods store, you would provide them with the code number. Just say you put, punch in code 199 into the DNR licensing system, and it'll come up as, as uh, apprentice hunter validation. The cost is $3.50 on top of your small game license. And you can purchase it twice, two times in your life. So for hunting upland birds, specifically grouse and woodcock in Minnesota, you need to have a small games license and you need to have this apprentice validation if you don't have your firearms safety certificate. So the online course, How to Hunt Upland Birds. What is it about? Um, it is really telling you the story of upland hunting in North America. We travel from Minnesota to Maine, to Georgia, to California, and North Dakota. And in each one of those locations, we go hunting with somebody in that local area, hunting different birds usually. Um, tonight, we're going to go through um, a couple lessons that sit under those. And actually, uh, what I'd like you to do from a hunter story standpoint, if you can watch all five, wonderful. But the one I would ask you to watch specifically is Amanda Dyer in Maine. And that's what was playing at the beginning when we joined this evening. And the reason why I'm saying to do the Maine episode, even though the hunt here at the end of the month is in Minnesota, is that 
that is where we hunt grouse and woodcock. And it's surprising how similar the terrain is. And that was the focus, the bird focus for that episode. So that's why I'd like you to watch that. Please do also watch Minnesota with King Yang uh, if you have time. But in that episode, we're hunting ringneck pheasants, which is in a very different habitat and a different approach to hunting. So I'd like you to watch the Amanda Dyer story and then uh, go through each of the lessons, including rough grouse basics, American woodcock basics, hunting equipment, dogs, pre-hunt prep, post-hunt responsibilities, and finally hunting culture. And they're fairly, they're fairly quick, they're well-paced, and I think you'll find them entertaining. And uh, and so those are the those are the pieces we want you to to go through. Um, let's click over, and I want to show you the rough grouse and American woodcock uh, episodes. They're five minutes and three minutes, respectively. Upland birds of North America are a favorite quarry for many hunters. The natural beauty of these birds, as well as their uncanny ability to evade threats, are just a couple of the reasons why hunters have such an admiration for them. While each species of bird has unique characteristics, there are some things which are common to all. An easy way to initially think about upland birds is that they do have similarities to a domestic chicken. They're usually foraging for food on the ground, and we also prepare them in the kitchen much like we would a chicken from the store. Now that said, one of the joys of hunting upland birds is the opportunity to learn about all the unique characteristics of each species. So let's take a look at a few of the common upland birds you might consider hunting. The rough grouse has often been referred to as the king of the American game birds for its cunning wariness and the great sport afforded hunters who pursue them. On our trip to Maine, Amanda Carroll and I were unable to put a grouse in our game pouch, proof that this bird is a challenge to hunt. Now that said, when you put in some effort, a successful rough grouse hunt is definitely attainable. The rough grouse can have many color phases, including red, gray, and brown. The male is distinguished by his raised ruff of dark feathers and a larger tail fan with a connected bar and two dots on its rump. That said, the male and female look very similar and cannot be distinguished during flight. And for this reason, hunters are allowed to shoot either sex of ruffed grouse. Equal to this bird's skill in evading hunters is its flavor when you're fortunate enough to bring one into the kitchen. The meat is light and pink, and people who aren't familiar with wild game are often surprised at the mild yet unique flavor of ruffed grouse. The rough grouse is native to North America, and unlike many other birds, they resist domestication. So you will not find pen-raised grouse on game farms, but only in the thick woods where they run wild and free. To hunt these birds, it's best to head north. Even though you can find rough grouse as far south as Tennessee and North Georgia, they tend to thrive in places with cold and snowy winters. All Canadian provinces have rough grouse, and 38 of the 49 continental states have at least a few birds. Look for forests with a mixture of young and old tree growth. You'll often find that grouse like the edges of tree stands like aspen that may be 5 to 15 years old. These younger trees create a thick canopy which provides good cover from overhead predators. The Northeast and the Great Lakes regions of the country get quite a bit of attention of upland hunters when it comes to grouse. But again, there are many places where you can find the king of the American game birds. One of the most interesting behaviors of male grouse is their drumming. The sound occurs when the bird captures air beneath its wings in hopes of attracting a female. You may hear the drumming sound at most any time of year, but it really begins each spring during the breeding season.
Odds are that you'll hear this drumming while you're out hunting, but you won't likely see it happen. Coloration and slow movements of both males and females on the forest floor help them blend into their surroundings really well. Rough grouse can be very difficult to spot in the woods. Hunters oftentimes find the birds will hold tight and not flush until nearly stepping on them. At this point, the thunder of wings is definitely going to set your heart racing the first time you hear it, and probably many more times on future hunts. Rough grouse mostly consume vegetation, such as leaves, buds, and berries. They do also eat insects and invertebrates, but this makes up a small part of their diet. However, young grouse will eat mostly insects and invertebrates as they're rich in the much needed protein. Regardless of diet, most birds, including the rough grouse, have a crop as part of their digestive system. It's basically a pouch where food is stored before it is fully digested. Here's an example of a crop that's been opened up during the field dressing process with an adult grouse. As you can see, it was packed with small greens and catkins that still remained in the woods after the first frost. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to the American Woodcock video, and if you've got questions, uh, just punch them into the into the chat window, and uh, I will address them uh, as I see them. The American woodcock is a smaller game bird that migrates across the continent with the change of seasons. Even though we think of it as an upland bird, it's technically classified as a shorebird. With its stout body, short legs, and long bill, it's got an unmistakable look. The meat of this bird is dark and rich as compared to other upland birds. Its flavor is sometimes compared to liver, and many consider it their favorite upland bird for the table. Even though it's classified as a shorebird, the American woodcock primarily inhabits moist upland areas, especially when it's taking up residence in northern regions of the continent. These areas are very similar to those where you'll find rough grouse during the hunting season. When we were in Maine, we primarily targeted rough grouse, but we knew that woodcock would also be in the same area. At the end of the day, we dropped a woodcock in the game pouch instead of a grouse. Similar to grouse, the mottled brown and black plumage on most of its body make the woodcock very difficult to see on the forest floor. I can remember the first woodcock I shot as a kid. It took us more than 20 minutes to find the bird as it was camouflaged in a clump of grass on the ground. The woodcock also goes by many different nicknames, including Timberdoodle, which Amanda Dyer had emblazoned on her Jeep. This is one of the few game birds that migrate from Canada down to southern states each fall and return north in the spring. You'll need to keep tabs on the migration timeline each fall to determine if the birds are in the area you plan to hunt. If they're migrating through, you'll find them holding tight and they'll often flush very close to you or your dog, which can startle even the most steady of hands. Woodcock make interesting sounds, including the buzzy call referred to as a peent, and their wings also make a musical chirp when the bird is flushed. Probably the thing that woodcock are known most for, though, is their dance. The woodcock's diet consists almost exclusively of invertebrates and earthworms. The bird is able to use its long bill to probe deep into the ground and find the target food. All of this and more make the woodcock rather unique among game birds and it's why so many hunters fall in love with the American woodcock.
So again, um, these are two of the lessons, and this is what you'll see when you log in, is you'll see on the left side, each of the five stories, and then each of the 12 lessons that are underneath them. So we've just watched a couple of them on the rough grouse and the American woodcock. And so hopefully that gets you started and, and you can see what it's about and, uh, and complete the rest of these uh, at your own pace. Let me step back here to the slides. Okay, so for those of you who are going to be at the grouse camp at the end of the month, uh, here is what we have for an agenda. On Friday, September 29th, uh, you're welcome to arrive any time between, let's say, 3 and 5 p.m. Uh, note that it is about a three hour drive to Camp Olson, where we will be at from the Twin Cities, and we'll send out all the details. Uh, camp Olson, where we'll be holding the camp, is a YMCA camp up on Little Boy Lake in Cass County. It's a beautiful spot. We're very fortunate to be able to host this camp there. Uh, and so we'll we'll have uh, dinner uh, around six o'clock, uh, buffet dinner. And then immediately following that, we will do a safety discussion and overview of planning for the weekend. And then we'd like to ask, ask everybody to have lights out uh, early at, at nine o'clock, uh, because then we'll get up early the next morning and we're going to start our workshop. And so there'll be a workshop in the morning uh, starting at 730. Breakfast will be ready at six for anybody who wants to get up at, at that point or, or before. If you're even earlier than that, we'll probably get some coffee ready for you. Um, and then we'll do the workshop starting at 730. And, and uh, this is a, an introduction to North American hunting. And Darrell Smith from the Minority Outdoor Alliance will be leading this section. Uh, we'll then take a break at nine. Uh, come back and continue the workshop, uh, and I'll be talking about firearm safety, uh, and then we'll be going out and doing, um, actually having some shooting practice at uh, the range there uh, on the premise, where we'll be throwing some clay pigeons in the air so you can get some practice with the gun you're using and get comfortable with it. We'll then head over to uh, back to the building uh, for lunch. Uh, it'll be a sandwich bar and you can either eat it there or just hit the field. And then uh, we'll be hunting for the afternoon on pu both public and private land in the area. And this is a wonderful, uh, rich area with a lot of great habitat for grouse and woodcock. And you'll be paired up new hunters with mentors. Uh, for those who want to be back by five o'clock, we'll do demonstration of field dressing a wild bird. Uh, that is presuming we have a bird or two that we've that we've uh, been able to harvest, and hopefully we've killed a, a couple birds by that point. And then we'll have dinner at six thirty. Uh, the the official end of the hunting day is six forty seven, which is sunset. We'll have a campfire that evening, sharing stories and just relaxing. Uh, and then Sunday morning, uh, we'll have breakfast uh, at the same time, 6 a.m., and this will be the final official event. And then people are welcome to hunt uh, and pair off in whatever uh, um, formation makes sense. You can stick with your mentor from the day before. Um, if you have an uh, apprentice validation, obviously you have to be with your mentor side by side at all times. And then people can depart on their own. Some people might decide to stay longer. Some may have to head out earlier. It's really up to your own uh, your own agenda and requirements from a timing standpoint. So next steps, regardless of whether you're going to the camp or not, um, again, a little bit of a broken record here, but make sure you obtain your firearm safety certificate. Uh, purchase a small game hunting license from the Minnesota DNR. That is required for hunting if you're here in Minnesota. So uh, just punch in Minnesota DNR and small game hunting license and you'll be able to find it. Complete the online course at howtohuntuplumbirds.org. Register for the private Facebook group. You can ask questions in that group. And again, the community in there is very helpful at providing uh, feedback and ideas and thoughts. Uh, we will uh, send out, for those of you attending the camp at the end of the month, we'll be sending out travel plans and equipment needs worksheet. Please 
complete that so that we know what your needs are and when you plan to arrive and depart. And the next official event will be next Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. So that is really the end of the uh, formal presentation. And so <clears throat> I want to open it up if there's any questions that anybody has about the course in general, about hunting, about the uh, the upcoming grouse camp, any other things. If you have it, please punt. You can put it in the chat function or uh, go off mute and ask me a question. Hello there. This is Corey. Hi, Corey. How are you? Doing well. Yourself? Not bad at all. I was going to ask, I travel everywhere with my dog. Is it cool if I bring my dog or no? Yeah. So is uh, is it a, what kind of dog is it? Is it a hunting dog or just a, a pet? GWP. She's a hunting dog. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, Yes, I think we'll we'll want to talk about talk through that a little bit more. But yes, I would say you you can probably bring your dog with you. So there will be some requirements that the camp has um, for um, having your dog well in camp, uh, mm -hmm. and and they ge generally want to have them you know fair, fairly well contained. They can't have uh, can't have dogs running around. So as long as you're do you do you crate your dog? I do. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, if you crate your dog, I would think that, that we should have no, no issues as long as, uh, as long as you, you're able to, to keep the, keep the dog under control. And I think we'll, that would be wonderful to have another dog there. Perfect. Very good question. Yep. That was pretty much it. I mean, I sent an email, but I didn't realize that this was the uh, zoom for tonight, but, uh, I, that was pretty much all the information that I all the questions I had you answered already. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Well, and, and again, we'll keep the conversation going. So if other questions do come up, you can, uh, you can ask. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. Well, um, doesn't look like I have any other questions. One last call here, I guess. Okay. Well, um, good question, Corey. Thanks so much for asking that. And um, we look. Oh, what was that? I didn't say anything else. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah. So everybody, we will uh, will resume. We'll look for information via email on next week's uh, webinar, which will be fairly uh, fairly concise and short. And uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions, mark at modcarn.com. Otherwise, we'll see you next week.